In this video, we're going to use this excellent hand crank generator and improve it by adding a supercapacitor power bank to create a mini boost box. With the easy addition of these supercapacitors, this little unit becomes a very compact, battery-free power box that you can use in many practical ways. Utilizing the built-in USB power ports, we're able to add many USB-powered accessories, like this USB-powered flashlight. This creates the best battery-free flashlight I've ever used. One minute of cranking provides over 10 minutes of usable light. We'll start with this small, compact hand crank generator. It costs $33 and was listed on Amazon. I'll provide links to all the needed parts in this video description, so if you want to build one of these, check out the links in the video description. I want to take this moment to say that this video is in no way sponsored by the manufacturers of this hand crank generator. They have no idea I'm even making this project. The provided instructions are adequate and assembly was very easy. You just mount this crank arm to the generator shaft. In this first test, I was pleasantly surprised to see how easy it was to freely generate energy with this hand crank generator. The instructions point out that for USB power, you should switch the voltage regulator to the 5 volts setting. Since the majority of the use cases I envisioned for this are USB powered, I'm just going to leave this in the 5 volts setting. I still have access to the full 12 volts directly off the supercapacitor power bank on the right side connectors here that you see on the front plate. Before adding the supercapacitors, I wanted to do some testing with this in its basic configuration as supplied by the manufacturer. As you can see in this test, it's very easy to generate power with this hand crank generator. While the basic generator was impressive, I found myself really looking forward to the addition of the supercapacitors. It's kind of a pain to have to crank non-stop to get some usable light. It was obvious that without supercapacitor power storage, a lot of the energy was just going to waste. I decided to do a cell phone charging test, and while my iPhone did accept the power from the USB port, I quickly realized this would take a really long time of constant cranking to charge a cell phone. With the supercapacitors, it'll get better because you can do a burst session of fast cranking and then take a break uh, in between. This hand crank generator in the stock configuration is a great little device, but with the addition of the supercapacitors turning it into a mini boost box, it takes it to a whole nother level. Let's go ahead and get started with the build process and add some supercapacitors. The first step is to gain access to the inside. It's pretty easy, you just remove these eight screws. There is some open space around the generator itself, and while I knew it might be a tight fit, I wanted to try to put the supercapacitors inside this box to make a compact little package. The next step was to figure out where to connect the supercapacitors to the board. It's actually pretty easy. They have a small capacitor here, and we're going to connect into the positive and negative connection points of this smaller capacitor. I had some 100 farad supercapacitors on hand from an older boost pack build. I'll provide a link to these supercapacitors in the video description. They're the Maxwell Supercaps 100 farad, and the size fits perfect in this little box. At this point, I removed the small capacitor, leaving enough of the legs coming up from the board to attach leads to the supercapacitor power bank. I had previously removed the protective cases from these supercaps, so I decided to add heat shrink tubing back to each of the supercaps to add an extra level of protection. It was at this moment that I started to wonder if I could actually fit all these large supercaps into this little case. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the fit was perfect. I could not have planned it any better. Next, I soldered on a long positive and negative wire to the points we identified on the board earlier. The next step is to connect all eight of the supercapacitors together, positive to negative, in series. For added protection, I added a small piece of heat shrink tubing at each of the points where the supercapacitors connect together. This completes the build process and converts this hand crank generator into a small hand crank boost pack with supercapacitor energy storage. Now it's time to do some testing. You can see here that the supercapacitor power bank charges really fast. I connected my inverter to the right side connections on the front of the generator, which bypasses the regulator and connects directly to the supercapacitor bank. In this configuration, I was even able to power AC devices, although the runtime, of course, is not very long. The problem here is that the inverter is a high wattage device, and the supercapacitor power bank does not hold a lot of energy for high watt loads over long periods of time. However, it was still fun to experiment and see what we could do. 
If the hand crank generator had a larger handle and a different gearing ratio, this might be more practical. You can see here I'm trying to add energy back into the system, but I'm just free spinning as fast as I can rotate. I guess if your power is out and you really wanted some salad dressing for your salad, you could whip some up this way, but I don't think it's very practical. So while it is pretty cool that you can power AC powered devices with a hand crank generator, it's just not the best use case for this device, at least at this gear ratio. But it's still fun to experiment and I really did enjoy seeing this globe levitate on energy that I cranked into the system myself. Looked pretty cool, although it was a short-lived experiment. Would have run longer if I connected it DC to the DC output instead of putting the wasteful inverter in line with it. Where this system really shines and has very practical value is when powering these USB powered devices. This works really well because you can charge the supercapacitor power bank up to 15 volts. However, the USB port on the front of the device is regulated to five volts. This gives you a wide voltage range to draw the energy from and gives you a very nice long runtime on USB powered devices. Today you can find a lot of USB powered devices, everything from lamps to fans to even a USB powered soldering iron. Thanks to the wide variety of these USB power devices, this mini boost pack actually has a lot of practical applications. While a USB powered soldering iron is a very impressive use of USB power, I find it most practical for its lighting applications. When coupled with a USB powered flashlight, you have a mini battery free hand crank flashlight that can take a minute of cranked energy and provide you many, many minutes of usable light. This makes the Mini Boost Pack an ideal device to have on hand for times when the power goes out or other such emergencies. For these tests, I completely discharge the supercapacitor bank and then charge the Mini Boost Pack for one minute. This is 10 minutes later after running the Mini USB bulb continuously. It stayed lit for over 20 minutes. Here we are with the USB powered flashlight. After charging for one minute from a completely dead state, we still have very usable light after 15 minutes of continuous runtime. With one minute of charging time, I was easily able to get over 10 minutes of reading time with this USB powered reading lamp. It's important to remember that a single minute of charging time does not fully charge the supercapacitor power bank. So with a longer charge time, you could extend these run times much longer. At this time, I'd like to extend a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. I'm going to be taking the items you see listed here, including the hand crank generator, and give them back to my Patreon supporters as a show of appreciation for your support. It'll be a first come, first serve contest over on Patreon. And if you're seeing this video, the contest and the selection is already over. So don't go join Patreon trying to get in on this contest. Well, that wraps it up for this video. We'll run this out with a USB powered programmable LED fan. It's pretty cool. You can program it to uh, display uh, different text uh, readouts. So I'm gonna charge this up here a little bit and we'll just let this uh, run down. All right, everybody, let's all keep experimenting. See you in the next video.